إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله جل وعلا وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أجارني الله وإياكم من النار ثم أما بعد My brothers in Islam, first and foremost a reminder for those who do not know when the khutbah is being delivered you're not allowed to play with anything in your hands and that includes the mobile phone you're not allowed to touch this and anyone who does so he invalidates the reward of al Jum'ah. For inshallah ta'ala, we're able to adhere to this commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers in Islam, one of the greatest calamities that people have been tested with today is listening to music and creating music albums, playing with musical instruments, bringing musical bands to their weddings and other occasions, and adding music into their video clips and whatever it is that they post on social media. And worse than this calamity is when some people, yani at times also a dua, some preachers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they appear from time to time and they preach the permissibility of listening to music and using musical instruments. And they back their views and opinions by saying that many, many scholars in Islam have mentioned the permissibility of music and listening to it and using its instruments. And they say that this is with certain conditions and so on. Khutbah is going to be about this today. And then came another deviation among the Muslim Ummah. And these are people that thought they were clever. But indeed the devil had led them astray. This is a group of people that introduced among the Muslim Ummah something known as beatboxing, which is the art of imitating musical instrument sounds with a person's mouth and his lips and the tongues and his voice. And they claimed that surely this must be permissible now. Well, subhanAllah, didn't these people know that there is a fundamental principle in Islam that states الشَّرِيعَةُ لَا تُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ الْمُتَمَاثِلَاتِ One of the solid foundations and principles of Islam is that in Islam, الشَّرِيعَةُ, the Islamic verdict, does not change, the ruling doesn't change when it comes to matters that are similar to the original. Yani in the case of musical instruments and beatboxing, whatever the ruling for musical instruments is, then the exact same ruling would be for that which imitates it, and that is the beatboxing. They will have the exact same ruling. For what games are we playing? Yani it's like, oh Allah, you have declared that musical instruments are haram, sami'na wa ata'na, but we we go, probably we worked out something very smart, and that is, let's use our own voice and lip and mouth and whatever it is to create sounds that imitate what is original, at times exactly the same, and we'll say this is permissible. Allah, this is not the case. فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ And as I give this advice, we want to understand when it comes to Muslims and them quoting opinions that are contrary to Al-Islam, Al-Quran, Al-Sunnah, 
and, and their actions and their sayings are evil and against the Quran or Sunnah, we need to know. We need to differentiate between a Muslim and that which he says and does that is haram. What a Muslim does and says that is munkar and evil, that we condemn, that we reject. As for the Muslim himself, we never condemn him and reject him in this manner because the Muslims are all brothers to each other. We love each other and we want guidance for all of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all and to forgive us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ فَقُلْ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, he said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, be humble towards the believers. And if they were to disobey you, then say, I am innocent from that which you do, not from them, from that which you do. So differentiate between these two things. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one instant, he sent Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu to a group of people to invite them to Islam. So Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu ended up going there and he killed them all. He came back when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upset and he said, Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka mimma sana'a Khalid. He said, oh Allah, I declare innocence and I am free from that which Khalid radiallahu anhu did. You see, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not condemn Khalid himself. He condemned that which he did which was wrong. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supported and aided Khalid radiallahu anhu to pay blood money to the families that he had affected. For this is very clear. For if you see Muslims that say something is halal when it is actually haram, then we condemn the opinion and the say, we reject that with solid evidence and proof from the Quran was Sunnah. And as for them, we love them. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal guidance for all and forgiveness for all. My brothers in Islam, Imam al-Albani rahimahullah, he said, concerning this matter of music, he said, I fear that the matter of music would increase so much that the people will forget the actual ruling on music to the point Whenever someone would get up and advise the people that this is haram and wrong, they would condemn him and they would label him as an extremist. For we need to be careful. Yani Imam al-Albani rahimahullah at the time, this was already widespread among his time. And people that were advising the people and telling them of the impermissibility of music, they were condemned and they were labeled as being extreme. So don't worry about me and others and what they say. We're going to turn to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and to the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if indeed you're a believer, you take that which is mentioned. But first and foremost, let me say this, my brothers in Islam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created us and he created our ears and our eyes. And he granted us the ability to see with our eyes and to hear with our ears. And there is no doubt that the greatest of the five senses we have is the ability to see with the eye and to hear with the ear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Allah counts a blessing upon the believers and upon mankind that he made us hearing and seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ It is he who made for you a sam'a, the ability to hear, والأبصار, the ability to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the e, the hearing before the sight. And we learn from this that this is a greater blessing to, able, to be able to hear. And this is the channel in which you're going to hear the truth and the word of Allah and the messenger of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from he that you're going to listen to the commandments of Allah and to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, medical experts say that the e and the ability to hear is completely developed way before the e, the eye, and the ability to see. And perhaps this may explain some of the wisdom as to why the hearing was mentioned before the sight. And our first relationship with Islam was hearing. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا This is very important. This is where you hear your deen. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِطُوا وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah azza wa jal, he says to Musa alayhi salam, وَأَنَ اخْتَرْتُكَ فَاسْتَمِعْ لِمَا يُوحَى 
This here is supposed to be used to hear Allah Azza's command and to learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we know that this is a great blessing. And since we know this is a great blessing and the ability to hear is a great blessing, there are responsibilities. And that is that we are supposed to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing for us. And in order to be grateful for the ability to hear, there are three things you need to do. How do we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for the blessings He gave us? There are three steps. Number one, to acknowledge that it came from Allah alone and no one else. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Any blessing that you're given, it came from Allah. That's number one. Acknowledge in your heart that the ability to hear was a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gave you and deprived others. Step number two is that you thank Allah on your tongue for the blessings that he gave you. And this is why every morning, as soon as you wake up, if you woke up before the Adhan of Al-Fajr, as soon as you wake up from the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi aafani fi jasadi. You say, oh Allah, all praise and thanks belongs to you that you protected and saved my body. You maintained the ability for me to hear. I woke up and I'm still listening. Walhamdulillah, no disease has affected it. No disorder has affected it. And all the blessings of the body. Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafani fi jasadi. Every morning you're saying this, thanking Allah on your tongue for the blessing that he has given you in your body. And that includes the ability to hear. And then after Salat al-Fajr, in the Adhkar al-Sabah, we say, Alhamdulillah, Allahumma, Allahumma aafini fi jasadi. اللهم عافني في سمعي اللهم عافني في بصري You see when you woke up you thanked Allah that he had protected your body Now once you've prayed Salat al-Fajr you continue to ask Allah to maintain this protection for you So you say اللهم عافني في جسدي Oh Allah give me well-being and protection and safety in my body اللهم عافني في سمعي Give me protection and well-being in my hearing So that I only hear that which pleases you and save and protect my e from listening to filth and that which brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's displeasure. طيب, my brothers in Islam, that's the second way in how you thank a blessing. Heart, tongue, and then there is a third way. And that is very important. Listen carefully here. And this is that you do not use the blessing in sin and disobedience. If you use a blessing Allah gave you to disobey Allah, and to transgress against Allah, then enter your gratitude to Allah is deficient. It's incomplete. The blessing Allah gave you, keep it away from sin and disobedience. And so, using this E and the ability to hear in sin and disobedience makes a person fall short in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, those who say that music is a matter of difference of opinion and that you can follow what you like. Let's investigate this opinion here. Because there are, like uh, Abu Hamid al-Ghazali rahimahullah, Imam Ibn Hazm al-Andalusi rahimahullah, and others of contemporary, well, Dawood al-Zahiri rahimahullah, and others of contemporary ulama mentioned that music was permissible, and they said there are conditions and what you have. But in the khutbah, of course, we cannot bring their opinions and respond. Perhaps that will be done in a later lesson where we'll explain these opinions. But let's see this. Regardless, in Islam, there are masail khilafiya and masail ijtihadiyah. You need to understand the difference because once this is clear, everything else will be clear. Listen carefully. Masail khilafiya, masail ijtihadiyah. What's the difference between the two? Al-Masail al-Khilafiyah, the matters in which there is a difference of opinion. That's Al-Masail al-Khilafiyah. Meaning, these are matters in Islam in which there is more than two opinions. Two, three, four, Allahu Alam, there could be many. Masail al-Khilafiyah, many. However, only one of the opinions is backed with clear proof from the Quran, with Sunnah, and the consensus of Muslims. In al-masail al-khilafiyah are the matters in which there is a difference of opinion. More than two, three opinions, but only one of them has the backing of authentic ahadith and clear ayat as clear as the sun and consensus of the Muslims. In these matters, 
we're supposed to take the only one opinion that is backed with the clear proofs, and we must reject and condemn all the opinions that went against the authentic proofs. And the imams, the imams and the ulama that spoke the opinions that are contrary to the truth, we give them excuse. And we say perhaps the, the truth and the clear evidences did not arrive to them. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive them and to bestow his mercy upon them. But we're not allowed to follow them in that which they clearly erred in. So that's something very important to understand. And I'll give you examples. For example, when it comes to صفات الله عز وجل, the attributes of Allah, there are some ulama that would uh, interpret this in other than what a salaf rahimahumullah would explain. In this case, we say there is a difference of opinion, but the correct is to understand them the way a sahaba was salaf understood. And any interpretation that is done to the names and the attributes of Allah is deviation and it is a rejected opinion. And like the matter of Siyamu Sitti Ayyamin Min Shawwal, you know the six days of fasting after Ramadan? Did you know that there is khilaf in this matter? And that there are some ulama that would say it is disliked to fast six days of Shawwal? But the hadith is very clear that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged to fast them. So that opinion is rejected and it's condemned. And the one who said it is given excuse. We say perhaps this hadith did not reach him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. And we're not allowed to follow him on this yeah, mistake. Did you know as well? And I give you this. But I need to give it to you so you can really understand. Rectal penetration coming onto a woman from behind, has also been given a difference of opinion in Islam. So what do we do? The opinion that says is permissible is batil. It's rejected. Because the hadith that states it's haram is in incredibly clear, as clear as the sun. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَلْعُونٌ مَنْ أَتَى مْرَأَتَهُ مِنْ دُبُرِهَا That a person is cursed, the one who comes to his woman from behind. So as a result, we're only allowed to follow this opinion. And you cannot give consideration to those who went against this. And once again, they excused. Or perhaps they understood al-adillah wrong and whatever it is. For the idea is in masail khilafiyyah, there is more than two opinions. But only one is correct that is backed with the authentic ahadith and ayat. And the other one must be condemned and rejected. And you cannot preach to the people to take whatever they like and to do whatever they like, not allowed. Where does this come? In something known as, as I said to you, the second one, and that is called Masail Ijtihadiyah. What is Al Masail Al Ijtihadiyah? Al Masail Al Ijtihadiyah are the matters in which there is more than two opinions, more than two opinions, but in this case, there is nothing clear from the Quran and Sunnah and the consensus of the Muslims. In these matters, no problems. Someone followed this opinion, someone followed the other opinion. We do not condemn each other and we do not reject each other. And just like, يعني, for example, Al Khilaf, fi al Mawta li Kalam al Aha, do the dead he those who are living? There's nothing clear in the Quran and in the Sunnah. You want to believe they he? Oh, no problems. That and he? No problems. Uh, does Touching the private part, nullify the wudu or not, this is mas'ala ijtihadiya. There's nothing absolutely clear. And if there are certain ahadith, then there is opinions concerning those ahadith and different understandings concerning these ahadith. So no problems. Someone said this, someone said that, leave it. Wa al qunut fil witr, whether do we raise the hands before the ruku' or after the ruku' mas'ala ijtihadiya. No problems. Someone did this, someone did that, leave it. It's okay. And so here we come, these masail ishtihadiya, even though we said masail ishtihadiya, there's no clear proof, but it doesn't mean that the general people go and do what they like. No, the general people, and to you, people, general, me, myself, us, when it comes to general people, your madhab is your shaykh. You contact your shaykh because you don't know what to choose from the two. And your shaykh, according to his knowledge, 
in Islam will give you what he thinks is more correct to the truth and that's what you follow, that's what the general people would follow. So when it comes to the matter of music, it is from the Masail al khilafiyyah But the khilaf, the difference of opinion in it is completely rejected. Those who said it is permissible, that is completely rejected. Why? Because the proofs are as clear as the sun. From the sunnah, number one, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيَكُونَنَّ مِنْ أُمَّةِ أَقْوَامٌ يَسْتَحِلُّونَ الْحِرَى وَالْحَرِيرَ وَالْخَمْرَ وَالْمَعَازِفِ Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, There will come people from my nation that will declare al-hira. Al-hira is the private parts of women, meaning it refers to al-zina. People from this ummah would make al-zina halal, and they would make silk halal for its men, when in the case it is haram. Wal khamar, and they will make alcohol halal. Wal ma'azif, and they would make musical instruments halal. But you see what's incredible in this hadith is that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say musical instruments is haram. No. He said people will come and they will declare that musical instruments is haram. So when you have contemporary people today saying that musical instruments and listening to music is halal, we stand with this hadith and say subhanallah. This is what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prophesied. And this is exactly what is happening. Shuf al-dalil how it was. Allahu Akbar. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grouped, he grouped musical instruments with al-khamar, with alcohol. He mentioned it with that. With al-zina, he mentioned it. And he mentioned it with silk, meaning it's as filthy as the rest. That's musical instruments. And that's music. That's how filthy it is. Imam Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, he said music was permissible and he based that because this hadith to him was da'if. Oh, rahimahullah, he has his own ishtihad. But after that, and the tons of ulama that came after this to declare it authentic, well, Imam al-Bukhari himself is much more of a muhaddith, a narrator of hadith than Imam Ibn Hazm. Khalas, you're only left with one opinion. And you cannot regard that one. Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, perhaps Allah forgives him for his ishtihad. Then Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, if you were to look into his book, Al-Muhalla, you would find that he had incredible honor for this deen and to protect it and to safeguard it. Fa, there's longer words concerning yani Imam Ibn Hazm and his opinion, which I said later we'll share with you, inshallah. In another hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْخَمْرَ وَالْمَيْسِرَ وَالْكَوْبَةَ Hadith sahih, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that Allah azza wa jal has forbidden upon you alcohol and gambling and al-kawbah. Wal-kawbah is either a name of a specific musical instrument or it refers to all the musical instruments as al-ulama rahimahumullah would say. We in the Quran, tons of ahadith, tons of ayat that will explain this matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the prohibition of musical instruments in Mecca in the early stage of Islam. And this proves that the matter was serious. It must have been cut from day one. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَا أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينٌ Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, so there are some from a man, man, among mankind who purchase, they use their money, their wealth, to purchase لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ Idle, distracting speech. And what does that result into? لِيُضِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ اللَّامْ لَامُ الْعَاقِبَةِ Meaning this lahwa al-hadith, this distracting speech, would hack a consequence. It will naturally lead to الضَّلَالُ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ To being misled away from the path of Allah. وَيَتَّخِذَهَا هُزُوَا And it will lead to a person making mockery of the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ayah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu, the most knowledgeable concerning the meanings of the Qur'an said, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu, lahu al-hadith, lahu al-ghina. He said, by Allah, and he took an oath three times, Wallahi, 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 lahu al-hadith, distracting idle speech in the ayah, refers to music. Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Mas'ud said this, and it is authentic. And no one understood the Quran from the companions better than Ibn Mas'ud. 
to the point where Ibn Mas'ud would say, Wallah, if I know someone that has more knowledge than me in the Quran, that I can write to him, I'd get on a camel and get to him. And he said, Wallahi, three times this is referring to music. And as he said this opinion, he recited Qawlihi Ta'ala, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تَرَى الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ وَجُوهُهُمْ مُسْوَدَّةِ He recited the ayah in where Allah Azza wa Jal says, on the day of judgment, you will see those who lied against Allah, their faces would be black. He's reminding himself. He's reminding himself not to lie. And so he said, لَهُ الْحَدِيثِ is al ghina where Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu also said that this is concerning music. Well, Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah from at tabiin he said, lahu al-hadith is al-ma'azifu wal-ghina. It's the music and musical instruments. Ujabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he said, lahu al-hadith is al-ghina. These are companions. And many of the Salaf said, lahu al-hadith is music and musical instruments. Mujahid wa makhul wa ikrima wa ata al khurasani wa qatada wa sa'id ibn jubair wa maymun ibn mahran and so many would say that lahu al hadith is music and musical instruments in another ayah in surah al najm allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says afa min hadha al hadith ta'jabun wa tadhakun wa la tabkun wa antum samidun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks the state of Quraysh and the disbelievers. He says, do you people wonder and you're amazed at this Quran as it's being recited? And you continuously laugh and you do not cry and shed tears. All this while you are in a state of sumud. Ibn Abbas wa Ikrimah radiyallahu anhuma said that as sumud huwa al-ghina meaning the Quran was recited and they would listen while singing and playing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ Allah azza wa jal, he said to a shaytan, to Iblis, belittle whoever you want among mankind with your voice. Meaning, make them worthless. Make them ignorant with your voice. Use your voice to belittle them and make them worthless more than one of a salaf would mention that the voice of Iblis is Al-Ghina. And this is the opinion of Mujahid. Um, Mujahid is Imam Al-Mufassirin min Al-Tabi'een. He said, Inna sawta Iblis huwa Al-Ghina. The voice of Iblis is indeed music. And this narration, some would say it's weak. Why? Because within its chain, there is someone known as Layth ibn Abi Sulaym. And they said he is weak. So there is confusion, but that's not the case because you need to take in consideration of something. And that is that Layth ibn Abi Sulaym, if he was to narrate from Mujahid ibn Jubair in narrations concerning at tafsir then these narrations are authentic. Because when he narrated of tafsir opinions, he narrated from a book. And the other opinions that are not from a tafsir he narrated from his memory and he's weak so as a result this hadith is sahih and the one who declared it weak he himself is confused concerning the methodology of al ulama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says allah azza he praised believers by saying they do not witness false testimonies and here we have mujahid ibn jubair once again from the Imams of the Mufassirin, from the Tabi'een, he said, Az-Zuru huwa al-Ghina. Falsehood is music in itself. And all the companions are in agreement that musical instruments are impermissible. And the scholars of every century mentioned the consensus of Muslims concerning the impermissibility of music. Zakariya ibn Yahya, in the third century, mentioned there is consensus among the Muslims concerning the impermissibility of music. Al-Ajurri in the fourth century, fourth century did the same thing. Al-Tabari wa Ibn Abd al-Barr al-Maliki, he did the same thing in the fourth, in the fifth century. We have in the sixth century, Ibn Qudama wa Abu Qasim al-Shafi'i rahimahum Allah. Both of them would mention the consensus of the Ummah concerning the impermissibility of music and musical instruments. In the 7th century, 
بن الصلاح والقرطبي والعز بن عبد السلام إن أيت سنتري شيخ الإسلام ابن ابن تيمية وابن رجب وابن مفلح also uh, ابن القيم in the ninth century العراقي رحمه الله mentioned the same consensus in the tenth century you have ابن حجر الهيتمي and in the thirteenth century الآلوسي وأحمد الطحاوي and in the fourteenth century الإمام الغماري رحمهم الله جميعا notice every single century the consensus of Muslims agreeing to the fact that music and listening to musical instruments is haram was passed down one generation after the next. How clear is this? As clear as the sun. Now, you're not allowed to come now to Muslims and say to them, Al-Ghazali wa uh, Ibn Hazm wa Al-Zahiri or some contemporary Tantawi and uh, Al-Qardawi mentioned that it is permissible. You're not allowed to do this. These are scholars. They're excused. Perhaps they didn't see the authentic narrations. And if they did, there were certain issues. But the idea is, once the truth is as clear as the sun to you, it is not allowed for any Muslim to seek an opinion other than this. Wallahu a'lam aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi wahda. My brothers in Islam, the one who notices music and where it's played, he'll find that music and musical instruments and musical bands and these loud noise and loud sounds are an icon and a symbol in pubs, in clubs, in musical festivals, in brothels. This is where it is. As Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah said, this is shi'ar ahl al fisq This is the symbol. This is the identity of the people of corruption and sin. It is not the identity of Muslims. You think how the Sahaba was Salaf would sit down and love to sing to each other and use musical instruments? Heather, does this go into your mind? Ma'adullah. And in saying all this, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an exception for one musical instrument. And that is a duf, the drum. What duf, the correct meaning of a duf, is that round duf, the drum, that is closed from one end and open from the other side, and it has no rings around it, because in those rings, when they hit each other, that is music. And then this duf can be used in Islamic wedding, weddings, in occasions. Uh, no filthy words could be said as it's being used. Women are those to play this duf, not men. Because if men do this, they are cursed. لأن الله عز وجل لعن المتشبهين من الرجال بالنساء. Allah عز وجل cursed the men that imitate women. And this is something for the women. For as a result, it is not allowed to be played by men. And if women are going to play this among themselves in weddings and other occasions, then it can only be attended by women, among women, and that's it. This is what Al-Islam gave yani, permissibility for. And one more thing I would make commentary on, and that is that you might say, but music is everywhere. It's on our phone. Uh, you walk into the shopping centers. It's playing there. It's on the radio, on the TV. Wherever you go, you're listening to music. Listen very carefully. There is a difference between as-sama' wal istimaa There is a difference between listening and hearing. When you listen to something, al-istimaa is to attentively listen to something. This is what is forbidden. When you attentively listen to something, when you yourself turn it on and want to listen to it, this is what is haram. Otherwise, as-sama' which is hearing, hearing, and I heard noises. What's it to me? I didn't intend to listen to it. I didn't turn it on. I had no control. And I passed by a shopping center to go and get what I need for myself and my family. This is permissible. Allah Azza wa even said about the believers, وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغُوا مَرُّوا كِرَامًا That if the believers were to pass by a lagu, false idle speech, including music and other things, they would pass by in a dignified, noble manner. And I'm not here to listen to this, but I need to go and get what I need and I leave. 
Alhamdulillah, there is this space and leeway in our Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. هذا وصل وسلم ورحمكم الله على خير البرية وأسك البشرية محمد بن عبد الله صاحب الحوض والشفاعة فقد أمركم الله تعالى بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته المسبحة بقدسه ونوه بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال عز من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون